Welcome to Little Home Projects. In this video, I'm going to show you how to safely add or swap a breaker in a house electrical panel. I need to add a breaker for a wire that I already have going to my panel. But this would be the same technique if you were replacing a faulty breaker as well. Before heading to the store to buy yourself a new breaker, you want to try and determine what kind of panel you'll have. Breakers are made to fit the specific type of panel they were designed for. If you have an older style panel and you're not sure what style you need, the easiest thing might be to take one of the old breakers out and bring it to the store and match them up. You can see here when comparing these two breakers, the end is very different from the other, and it needs to match the exact right panel. On the other side, you can see that the metal prongs that the breaker connects the two electricity with are very different as well, and it's very important that these are identical for all of your breakers. To tackle an electrical panel, you're going to need some screwdrivers. For me, I'll be using a Robertson for most of it. I'm also going to be using my impact driver. If you do use an impact driver or a drill, do be careful. You don't want to over tighten any screws, which could end up cutting wires or stripping threads. You're also going to need a battery powered light. I'm using a battery powered work light. And you're also going to want some kind of an electrical tester. My preferred tester for checking for voltage is one of these electrical tester pens. I've heard them referred to as different names, uh, tick tester, tick tracer, uh, electrical testing pen, um, but basically it's just a non-contact voltage pen or non-contact voltage tester. What I really like about these is you turn them on, they give you an indicator to show that they're on, and you can bring them to a live wire without fear of being shocked. You can confirm that it's working by checking on any wire you know to be live. I've turned it on and I can see that it's on because the light is visible. And when I hold it against the plugged in wire, I get a blinking light and a beeping noise just indicating that there's live current going through. If I put it on the other side of the wire, there's no beep, which shows you have to be pretty close to the actual current to get a proper reading. Depending on the type of plug you have, you can also just stick it straight into the socket to find out which side is hot. Don't use this as your exclusive method for checking if there's power. Do actively turn the power off whenever you're working on a panel. This could still give you a false reading if there's too much insulation in your wire sting. I always feel the safest with this, so I always like to use it whenever I open up any panel. If I walk away from a panel even for a few minutes, I'll recheck again just to make sure that nothing's changed. One other technicality to mention is that you're almost certainly going to need a permit for this type of work. I do have a permit because I've been doing other electrical work, but I also know plenty of people that don't bother with permits for this type of project. The true benefit to getting a permit is you're going to have a professional safety inspector or an electrician come and look at your work and give you peace of mind that it's been done safely and correctly. Also, if you have another contractor doing work for you, an inspection forces them to make sure it gets done right. If it's not done right, the inspector will say so, and they'll have to come back and redo the work. Before you can take the cover off the electrical panel, the first thing you need to do is turn the power off to the entire house. I like to go around the house and unplug anything that is important before I do this, so I unplug my computers, TV, stereo, that sort of thing, just in case there's a power surge. I like to have those big ticket items off the grid while I'm working. Somewhere in your panel, you're going to have a main breaker. It's going to be a much higher number than all your other breakers. It's going to be turning off the power to the rest of them. So that's what we want to turn off. And once that's off, we can safely remove the cover of the electrical panel. The cover of my panel is held on with just six screws. Now you want to be careful when you're taking these out. You don't want to strip anything. You don't want to do any damage. You don't want to scratch the surface of your cabinet. As you start to pull off the last screws of the cover, do be careful. It can just fall off once they're out of the way. An extra set of hands might help in getting the panel off here. The inside of panels can actually look quite different from panel to panel. Depending on how old it is as well, it may be dirty, it may be greasy. But simply put, there's a main feed of wires that come in through the bottom. They feed into the main breaker for the house. These, these wires should still be covered. If they're exposed, then you should stop work and get a professional because these wires are still hot. For me, they're covered, so it's safe to keep working. All the power should be off to all these breakers up top. I'm going to use my voltage tester to make sure that's the case. Make sure it's on, check all the different wires, stick around different places in the panel, make sure that you feel comfortable that everything is off. Again, if you haven't tested this tester on, an, on a live wire so that you know it works, stop and go and test it on a live wire somewhere else so you know the tester is not broken. Generally the way a panel works is that there is a metal bar going through the center of the panel. That's where all the electricity is coming from and the breaker connects the power from the center bar to the outside bar where all the wires are connected. So to put the breaker in, in my panel, I start by anchoring the breaker into the outside edge of the center panel and then pressing down on the center until it locks into place. 
the power would now be able to flow from the center bar to the outside of the breaker where I connect the wire. I'm going to repeat the process because I have another set that I'm going to put in. So I first connect the outside edge of the breaker to the outside edge of the center panel and press down on the center over top of the metal bar and it should just slide into place. Attaching the wire is also quite easy. For my breakers they just sit into a hole in the side of the breaker and a screw tightens down on top of that to keep them into place. Give the wire a tug to make sure it's not going to come out and that everything sits flush. We're done and ready to cover back up again. I make sure everything's in the off position just out of habit and I can start reassembling my panel. The wires in my panel are packed in pretty tight so I'm making sure that nothing is sticking out before I put the cover back on. Everything's tucked into the panel nice and clean. One more thing I have to do before I can put the panel cover back on is I have to knock out a couple sections where the new breakers are sitting. For my panel it's just a matter of bending these little metal tabs back and forth until they snap off. If I accidentally took one too many out or you're pulling out an old breaker and you have a space, you can buy these little plastic plugs that go inside your panel to cover up the wires. If you do have an empty space you absolutely have to cover this otherwise you'd be able to reach the live wires so it's very important to make sure it's covered. If you get an inspection he'll check for that. Time to put everything back together. I always have to wiggle it around a little bit to make sure the breakers sit in the knockouts just right. Everything kind of snaps into place and that's how I know it's in the right spot. With that there I can thread the screws in. I'd like to thread them in by hand first to make sure that the threads aren't crossed and everything's going to go in properly. If you accidentally strip these threads, you'd have to retap them and put in bigger screws. And right there, the battery in my light just died. So good thing I'm almost done because I don't want to work in the dark if I don't have to. I finished with the last screws, make sure everything's snug but not over tight, and I can turn the main power back on. For mine, it's a pretty heavy switch. Flipping the switch makes all the lights come back on and I can hear the house coming back to life. The last step before finishing up is you need to make sure that the new breaker that's been added is properly labeled on the breaker panel. This is another thing that if you get an inspection, they will check for. After labeling the breaker that has the wire added to it, I have to make sure to go back and label the other ones as spare. That way it's obvious they're not being used. And with that, I'm finished. Adding or replacing a breaker is a reasonable job for a homeowner to take on. It's safe as long as you feel comfortable working around electricity and you take the proper steps to make sure everything's right. If you don't feel comfortable doing this type of job, don't. Pay for a professional. I'm really happy I'm able to do this kind of job for myself. If I had a paid an electrician, it would have been on the order of $1 to $200. This has been a video from Little Home Projects. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, please hit subscribe. I try to post new videos every week. Thanks for watching.